So we're at the point where we're finishing up our original fish wish list, and the fish that we'll be adding today will be some of the very final fish, and those are the tangs. I've saved the tangs for last, or should I say put off the tangs for last, because there's compatibility issues and territorialism issues. With that in mind, Previously, you saw we added the, 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 the more sociable tangs, which would be the blue tangs and the two naso tangs. Today, we'll be adding the uh, yellow eye or coal tangs, as well as a chocolate tang, and what I believe is called a tomini tang. These latter two tangs, the big risk is HLLE, head and lateral line erosion which is basically all those little pock marks that show up around the face of a tang or that choppy punk rock look where all the tissue disappears between the dorsal spines on the top of the fish. I debated quite heavily this morning about the chocolate tang but I finally brought him in a bucket out into the sun and looked at him and I felt confident enough that he was fine to put into the tank. So with that in mind, come along with us as we add the final fish, except for those eels, into the 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium. see why I'm a little uh, protective about putting more fish into the tank when what I've got in there is doing extremely well. And keep in mind there's a couple of schools of butterfly fish in there and uh, three very impressive uh, angelfish, harlequin tusks, wrasses. Um, so you can see again why I'm uh, hesitant to add something that I guess I have to admit I'm not big on tangs, but that's what the homeowner requested and that's my task and my, uh, my challenge. And you can see here, that's the uh, Tomini tang. I could be pronouncing that wrong. And then there's the uh, chocolate tang. And over here inside the coffee cup are two uh, yellow eye or coal tangs. They have different patterns on them though. The first step in adding any new fish to an aquarium is to acclimate them to the new water. I do this by siphoning water directly from the tank into the buckets that the new fish have arrived in. This allows them to adjust directly and yet slowly to that new water. This tank's coral decorations consist of coral skeletons. There are two sets of decorations and they're rotated in and out of the tank every two weeks. The set that is not in the tank goes through a bleaching process which removes the algae growth that occurred previously. These naturally colored coral decorations won't fade due to the bleaching process and the every other week rotation provides for a fairly consistent, clean look in the aquarium. While you might question the choice of dead coral skeletons over the living coral reef, you should note that previously in this same location sat a 300 gallon living coral reef tank for the last 20 years. The homeowner was tired of that look or what that tank had turned into. As a fish only system, using removable coral decorations and containing no invertebrates does provide an opportunity for a much wider range of fish choices. It also provides for an aquarium system that if needed, one can introduce various medications for the control of the inevitable fish parasites such as ick or flukes. In addition, due to the interest in a greater and more exotic collection of fish and as a result of a much larger amount of fish food to be fed, algae problems 
are a much greater likelihood as a direct result of an elevated nutrient level of nitrate or phosphate. As an effective attempt to control those nutrients and in turn the algae growth, we've included an algae scrubber on this tank. It's an original Santa Monica algae scrubber, model 100. The scrubber is designed for 10 cubes of fish food on a daily basis, and that unit's algae is cleaned out on a weekly basis. While I can't tell you what the nitrate or phosphate levels are, I can show you. And aside from some patchy red slime algae, the tank really doesn't grow much algae at all, beyond enough to turn the coral decorations brown on an every two week basis. Collectively, the coral decorations, which do present a fish-only tank look, the lack of invertebrates and the algae scrubber to consume nutrients and decrease algae issues, this tank is far more capable of responding and dealing with the use of medications. So why would you not need to use medications in a living coral reef tank? Wouldn't the live rock and other invertebrates provide for a more stable ecosystem type environment? Wouldn't that be more resistive to disease outbreaks? Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but no. It's been my experience that all life added to an aquarium not only brings along items that you're not aware of, but items that have issues that don't make themselves apparent right away and situations outside the aquarium greatly influence the tank itself. All of these reasons allow for a more traditional fish-only system to be administered and dealt with on a medicinal level far more effectively than a tank with live rock, corals, or invertebrates. Now, having said that, if you're not familiar with medications or how to dispense them, then you're only one half step ahead of the game. Treatments of fish usually are done with broad spectrum medications and not all fish tolerate those medications or their full dosage applications. But those are subjects for a future episode. SpectraPure manufactures the best filtration systems on the market and they're one of the few manufacturers that actually make their own cartridges as well. If you're looking for a filtration system for your reef tank or fish tank, look no further and don't settle. Check out SpectraPure.com for more information. In addition to filtration systems, they also make some of the best dosing solutions on the market. The Leader Meter 3 can control up to four pumps and you can program the amount of transfer or the amount of fluid you want to transfer with the push of a button down to the milliliter. If you're looking for a dosing solution, check out SpectraPure.com. They're not only a manufacturer, they're an innovator, and they make some of the best equipment available. Next time you're near Long Beach, California, take the time to stop in at Age of Aquariums, 2642 Cherry Avenue, just off the 405 freeway near Signal Hill. Age of Aquariums carries a full line of dry goods, supplements, and exotic equipment. Age of Aquariums also carries a wide assortment of living corals, coral frags, as well as fresh and saltwater fish ranging from the usual, the unusual, and the bizarre. Age of Aquariums is located at 2642 Cherry Avenue, Long Beach, California, near Signal Hill. Open seven days a week. Call 562-438-6252 or visit ageofaquariums.biz. Do you have an aquarium question? Are you looking for aquatic answers? Just key in wetwebmedia.com. Wet Web Media has information on freshwater, marine, brackish, and planted aquariums. Wet Web Media is staffed by the capable Wet Web Media crew. Check today's facts, ask questions, or search keywords. That's wetwebmedia.com. The owner of this aquarium requested at our initial conversation that we set up this 400 gallon bow shaped tank as a fish only system. 
And as I did in the first half of this video, we spoke of the benefits of a fish-only type system as opposed to a living coral reef. But as with everything, there is the opposing aspects. Now here's the downside to those little blue tangs is they get so frightened, they go and they hide in the coral decorations. And if you're not paying attention, next thing you know, oh, And the sad part is, that's very common with those blue tangs. I think the tank upstairs had a blue tang in it once, but I didn't discover it until I went to go bleach the corals a week later at home as it was dried up in the bottom box. Uh, I can tell you stories of having to place corals on top of the tank just waiting for the blue tang to fall out. And it can be big blue tangs as well. In fact, I remember a situation years ago where I actually put the cor customer's corals in the box, went off to the next service when he happened to call me on the cell phone and ask where his blue tang was. And after a few questions, I went out and looked in the box sitting in the van. And lo and behold, there was his blue tang flopping around in a shallow pool of water. So it's very common for blue tangs to, to, to hide themselves inside that coral. So you just have to pay attention when you pull those and it's not just the blue hippo tangs. I've lost royal gramas, and just last week I discovered where a customer's yellow tailed blue damsel had disappeared to. When I pull out the dirty corals, I usually try to invert the coral or the shell. Often it's the purple striped barnacles that many small fish swim into for safety, and even inverting the shell does not always evict the frightened little inhabitant. It just goes to show that there's more than one way to skin a cat fish. The yin and the yang, or the up and the downside to everything, including one's approach to aquarium keeping. Whether it be controlling nutrients in a brightly lit coral reef tank, or creating a manageable environment for the medicinal treatment of diseases or parasites. This tank, as requested by the homeowner, is to be a fish-only system. It's my task not only to clean, stock, and maintain it, but to build it in a manner that's best suited for its needs now and for the future. And both require the need to be prepared for dealing with problems or issues easily, promptly, and effectively. As I now clean the tank and prepare to add the four remaining tangs, I find myself at the end of a six month fish list and loading schedule. Previously, we defined which fish we were going to add into the tank based on those fish choices and my experience with those fish, I created a loading schedule of which fish would go into the tank in what order. We cycled the tank with yellow-tailed blue damsels. These are the sociable damsels. We then added in the clownfish, the original pair of perculas from the prior reef tank, and a handful of small juveniles. We then added a school of 10 Heniocus butterflies, followed by four different hawkfish species. Later, we added some additional butterflies, and then the triggerfish. Allowing a few weeks between each group of fish added, we then placed in the banana and green bird wrasses along with the harlequin tusk. As you saw in a previous episode, there were four exotic angelfish that were also added. Of all the fish, the tangs are the most territorial, and I felt it was best that they not go into the tank until last. Of all the fish, the tangs are the most territorial. I felt it was best that they go into the tank last. Due to the number of tangs, we broke it up into two different groups and previously added in the two naso and blue tangs. Today, we're adding the last of the fish on the list and the balance of the tangs. This schedule 
has allowed me to add a large number of fish to one tank with no compatibility issues. Yet. I say yet, as these tangs, the two yellow eye, chocolate, and the tomini, will be the more aggressive, and once they settle in, the more territorial of all the tangs. In addition to their behavioral issues, all tangs, some much more than others, are susceptible to HLLE, also known as head and lateral line erosion, or simply hole in the head. These are the deep gouges along the lateral seam on the sides of the fish or up around the head and the face. There are a handful of assumptions as to why this occurs, ranging from stray voltage, the use of activated carbon, lack of dietary needs, or parasitic in nature. Ironically, it's the previously added blue tanks that are the most susceptible. In my opinion, the family of Zebrosima, which includes the yellow, the purple, the black, the scopus, and the sailfin tangs, are the most affected by this. Coupled along with fin rot, which is where the tissue in the dorsal and anal fins between the spines begins to deteriorate, leaving a rather cropped or punk rock look. None of those tangs have been selected for this tank. So as we finish up the cleaning of the inside of this 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium, make sure to come on back for part two as we vacuum out the gravel, replace 30 gallons of salt water, redecorate the tank, and add in those final tangs to our fish family.